Hello everyone, I'm Walter Benaziak and this is Top 5. Today we return to counting down the best and worst of our favorite actors with a legend who just earned his 7th Oscar nomination. Does Denzel Washington even have any bad performances? Guess we're gonna find out. So since we've had three best lists in a row, I decided to go with Denzel's worst first. However, this is another case where an actor of his caliber doesn't really have any bad performances. Denzel has been acting in TV and film since the late 70s and has become one of the most respected people in his field. His range is incredibly wide as he often showcases his talent in massively different characters. I really had to dig into his filmography to find anything subpar and even then, his worst is better than most actors best. He's held to a high standard and should be with the amazing work he's put out. Let's dive in. Here are the top five worst Denzel Washington performances. Number five, Reuben James in For Queen and Country. This movie came out in 1988 and had Washington playing a Brit with a pretty darn good English accent. Reuben James is a paratrooper who is discharged from the British military and decides to go back to the London inner city neighborhood he grew up in. However, once there, he is met with an unwelcoming set of circumstances that start pushing him down a path he does not want to go down. Some past friends are now enemies as the neighborhood and his country seem to have turned against him. Denzel's actually not bad in this. The character is pretty dull, which makes for a few boring scenes, but all in all, he's pretty decent. He's just not on the mega high level we all know him best for. While we see early signs of badass characters he would play years down the road, Reuben James comes up short on that end. Hacker a band. That's all I got on me, mate. Packet a Rizzler. That's all I got on me, mate. The film itself has its moments, but just drags for way too long. If you're a huge Denzel fan, you'll probably get something out of For Queen and Country, but he's had a career full of amazing performances, and I don't see much of a reason to dwell on this mediocre one. On to number four. Lieutenant Parker Barnes in Virtuosity. Got to admit, while this isn't really a good movie and I wondered the whole time why he agreed to be in this, it can be pretty entertaining. After murdering the man who killed his wife and daughter, Parker Barnes is thrown in prison. Years later, he is recruited to test out a new virtual reality program where he attempts to capture the computer-generated villain named Sid 6.7. Sid has been modeled on hundreds of mass murdering criminals and with help, he is able to escape into the real world. The police then cut a deal with Barnes to catch the insane being before he kills more people. Before I get to Denzel, Russell Crowe is nuts in this and it's amazing. He is just off the wall crazy and at the very least, he's amusing enough to check out this weird little movie in a guilty pleasure kind of way. It's sort of like Demolition Man but not as interesting or memorable. My God, he's evolving. Into what? Besides Crow and Washington, we have the UFC, Ken Shamrock, and Michael Buffer in this thing. It's great. Denzel is very out of place in this strange, kitschy sci-fi film, and once again, he's not bad, but he has nothing to work with. His character has plenty of motivation behind him, but just comes off too hollow for anyone to connect with or have sympathy for. He does have some sick dreads, though. Check out Virtuosity if you want some weird 90s sci-fi camp, but otherwise, it's a weaker role for Denzel. Number 3. Napoleon Stone in Heart Condition Washington apparently fired his manager after he was made to do this movie. I can see why. Racist policeman Jack Mooney has spent years perpetuating bad habits and they eventually result in a life-threatening heart attack. To save his life, Mooney needs a heart transplant and gets one from black lawyer Napoleon Stone who had been sleeping with Jack's ex-girlfriend Crystal. Napoleon died mysteriously the same night as Mooney's heart attack and has returned as a ghost to push the cop towards finding his killer while generally annoying him in the process. This was the first movie released after Denzel's Oscar-winning performance in Glory. Not exactly a stellar follow-up. There's not much for him to sink his teeth into here, but his chemistry with Bob Hoskins can be entertaining at a few points. What's your favorite movie? Rambo. Rambo? Washington's character just comes off too unlikable. Add that to Hoskins' character, who's supposed to be over-the-top unlikable, and you have a movie that can be a little difficult to sit through. 
We all know Denzel was above this. He knew it too, and there's a reason he's very rarely done straight comedies after this was released. I'd deter you from checking it out, but hey, if Bob Hoskins getting a makeover is something you'd like to see, maybe you'll be interested in what Heart Condition has to offer. If not, it's a definite skip. Number two, Xavier Quinn in The Mighty Quinn. Denzel Washington should never be boring. It takes a special movie to make him that way. Based on the 1971 novel Finding Malby, the mighty Quinn follows Caribbean island police chief Xavier Quinn as he investigates the death of a rich resident of the island. All signs point to his childhood friend Malby as the lead suspect, but Quinn has a tough time bringing himself to accept that his old friend could do such a thing. With corruption all around him, the chief must navigate through personal and political problems to find the truth. The Mighty Quinn is the dullest movie on this list. It's only an hour and 38 minutes, but it felt like I spent the entire day watching this thing. It wasn't very clear what was happening throughout the film, and that made it even more difficult to get through. Plus, they have Meteor Man in this movie, and he's not even using his powers. What a waste. Denzel himself doesn't seem as engaged as he usually is, and that's very rare from him. His character isn't exactly compelling. How do I look? Guess who's coming? <laughs> like a ripe mango. They have a few songs thrown in there and they actually can be kind of catchy. Come on with up, come on within. You ain't see a lot like What the hell was that? And the number one worst Denzel Washington performance is Roger Porter in Carbon Copy. So this movie is, how can I put this, dated. Walter Whitney is a successful married businessman who finds out he has a long lost black son named Roger when he shows up in person to meet Walter. Whitney's inner circle is appalled by the fact that he had an interracial relationship and even more so that he has a grown son. He's kicked out of his home by his wife as he and Roger struggle to find a steady place to live and work. This was Washington's feature film debut, so he's only gone up from here. The character he's playing just doesn't fit the persona we all know him for now, but it was a start for him in the movie business. Prior to this, he only appeared in a couple TV films. Hi, Daddy. Good morning, Whitey. Hi there, honky. Carbon Copy definitely wouldn't be seen as politically correct now, but I'm guessing that was sort of the point back then. I will say though, it goes pretty far in a few areas that would make a lot of people uncomfortable. In addition to the heavy racial themes, it also delves into a few questionable sexual situations. Seeing Denzel as this young of a man is very interesting. There's not much of a hint at what he was to become, but if you are a big follower of his career, maybe check it out for curiosity's sake and see where this acting powerhouse started. Mom was great for saving things. I mean, if a bird left some crumbs on a windowsill, she'd leave them there like she expected the bird to come back or something. I mean, it never entered her mind that the bird had forgotten where she lived. Now that that's out of the way, I'm looking forward to next week. Denzel's best won't be easy to choose, but it's going to be fun diving into his greatest work. I want to hear what you guys think. Do you have a least favorite Denzel Washington performance and or movie? Leave a comment and let me know. Make sure you check out Awesome Comics from yesterday. Heather, Porter, and Ayana are counting down the top 10 episodes of the 90s X-Men animated series. Follow me on Twitter at Awesome underscore Walter to take part in more polls about what may be covered in the future. Come back next week when we get down to business and take a look at the top five best Denzel Washington performances. See you then. He's evolving. My God. He's evolving. Into what? Come on without. Come on within. You ain't see a lot of light in my day. Uh -uh. Come on without. Come on within. You ain't see another light in my day. Molly was wild. Mighty Quinn was mild, just like an inno, an innocent child. Each and all is more this friend. Even that Bob 
Well, I'm the mighty queen. 